So Sharda, can you tell me something about your? Yeah, can you tell me um, something okay, about yourself? Yeah. 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 Um, so my name is Sharda. I'm yeah. from uh, Nandir, Maharashtra. I have completed my bachelor's of engineering from Pune University. And uh, I have total 3.3 years of experience in software testing, out of which I have uh, two years of experience in automation and one year, of, one year of experience in mobile manual testing. Okay, great. So can you tell us something about your framework? automation framework yes um so currently um we have already built a framework that we are using in our project um i was not a part of it while they were building it but i have an idea so i can explain that yeah, yeah sure. uh, so okay uh, so currently uh, we have created one customized uh, hybrid framework uh, which uh, but I mean, using which we create automation test cases using test ng, uh, test ng tool, and uh, we use um, Excel file and properties file uh, to fetch the data from, and we use um, HTML reports, and we use HTML reports created by um, test ng, and uh, we use um, design pattern as page object model uh, to create our test cases, and. Um, um yeah so that is how we create our test cases mm -hmm. okay great and which is the tool that you are using for continuous integration uh, we are using jenkins tool okay so uh, can you explain me uh, your day-to-day -day responsibilities and how do you run your automation framework using jenkins okay um so um once we have created, uh, once we have created our test cases, I mean, I create, um, I develop the methods. Okay, so if uh, once I have done with my work, once I have uh, created all the test cases and executed them, and once they are passed, I push my code to the uh, Git repository, and uh, now it is my uh, uh, lead's responsibility. They take my code and they merge with the master branch. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, let's say if uh, the automation code during the release time, how do you manage uh, to get the automation run via Jenkins? Do you do it via batch file or is it the DevOps team that is taking care of that? Yeah, uh, DevOps team takes care of it. Okay, okay, fine. So generally, see, uh, when you will be going for the interviews, you will be asked all these questions on continuous integration and how are you triggering your automation framework? So over there, you can answer like uh, what happens is at the nightly uh, run automation suit is there. It is running every night. So in the morning when I'm going to the office, I'm looking at the emails over there. So Jenkins has a feature of, uh, of sending the reports via email. So you can tell those things and in this way you can give up, you know, you will get a good impression on the interviewer also. And there is nothing, uh, you know, rocket science in Jenkins. Jenkins has got a pipeline, basically. And in that, there are various stages. So first stage would be the all the development code would get downloaded from the Bitbucket or from the Git, whichever tool the developers are using. Then mm -hmm. the second stage is the machine would get created. The virtual machine would mm -hmm. get created on the fly. Now, it is also dependent on the operating system. Some people choose 2016 server OS. Some people go for 2019. Some people still use 2012 OS. So based on that configuration on that batch file, on the stage two, the machine would get created on the fly. Again, with those parameters like 32 bit, 64 bit. Then in the third stage, the automation, your automation code would get downloaded. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then on the fourth stage, the installation of the product would happen. Installation or configuration, right? And then the mm -hmm. fifth stage is the entire automation suite that is a Selenium would get um, executed. Six stages, the email would be configured that so and so XYZ email would be given for the re uh, successful results, unsuccessful results to the stakeholders or to your managers, to your leads. So if you explain in this manner, no, so it will give a good impression on the interviewer. Okay, it okay, is- I, it, I'm making the points. Yeah, it is totally taken care by the DevOps team. But these days, you know, in the companies, 
uh, you know in 2021 it is expected from a software tester to at least know what is happening behind the things right okay yeah. so just this on a high level if you can explain it would be great yeah okay, okay yeah. yeah so uh, what what is test ng actually um, test ng is um, actually um, automated tool which gives mm -hmm. us the control over all the test cases which test cases to be executed and and which test cases to be uh, skipped uh, also we can uh, run the test cases as a as a as a part of um, as a part of packs like sanity test regression test etc that we can or integration testing mm -hmm. you know that we can do with the test ng and test ng allows us to uh, create to create the html reports mm -hmm. automatically they they give us the html reports of all the uh, results of test cases which are passed or which are, which are failed correct so what are the advantages yeah. of test ng over j unit um uh, I haven't used J unit. Okay. Thanks. So I have no idea. If you can explain. Yeah, yeah, sure. So basically, see, one of the key, there are three key advantages of test ng. One is the parallel testing is possible using test ng. Again, next thing is yes. test cases can be grouped easily. Then annotations are easy to understand, like at the rate before or at after, after suit, before suite. So all these annotations are very easier and th those are user friendly so you can say right j unit was earlier used before uh, people came to know about the advantages of test ng but as far as test ng has come into the industry and test ng is nothing like you know you rightly mentioned it is and it is next generation test ng means test stands for test and ng means next generation level of testing you can use mm -hmm. for that and since yes. the test ng has been discovered then j unit people are not using so many people might ask you these question like what are the advantages of test ng over j unit so the key advantages are parallel testing group testing and easy to understand annotations are very easy right? so those things you can think uh, just one question can we create um html or reports using j unit uh, okay so this is a good question that has come up so let us uh, leave it to the you know viewers of this video once uh, we'll be uploading this video on the youtube so i'll request all the viewers who are watching this video to give the answer of this question and we'll uh, from our channel side our team will be posting the answer in next 24 hours the question is okay. can the html reports be generated using j unit yes Okay. okay so you were mentioning about the automation framework so which selenium version you are using selenium 3.0 or three. three okay yes, so are, yes yeah so are you aware about selenium 4.0 um we haven't used it but i have heard that they have uh, they have included many features in yeah. selenium 4 okay so i i mean yet i didn't go through it but i mm -hmm. go through it shortly yeah no problem so uh, can you tell us the file locators that are newly added in selenium 4 we won't go much into the detail of selenium 4 because you are more comfortable with selenium 3 but can you uh, tell us the five new locators that have been added into selenium 4.0 version if you would have read it yeah if you would have no, read it somewhere okay fine well, i haven't read it yet no. okay no problem so there are five new locators that are added in selenium 4 one is the above above means it is uh, it is used to locate a web element just above the specified element next is below uh, so below same as you know opposite of above it would be used to locate a web element below the specified element mm -hmm. similarly two left off and two right off so uh, you can specify you can locate a web element present on the left side direction of the specified element and similar goes for to right off and near means approximately 50 pixels away from the specified element so you can locate the web element so these are you know uh, major file locators that are newly introduced in selenium 4 okay yeah okay so can you tell me um, that but yes we, we can we can also look at uh, elements in Selenium 3 in an easy way instead mm -hmm. of using above and below. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You can use 
but over uh, you know they came up with some these few few of the new things that have come up in the selenium 4 and many of the uh, users were finding it difficult maybe and so they have just uh, done the coding in that direction yeah. Mm -hmm. okay yeah okay so can you tell me which are the annotations you are uh, using in test engine Yes, so the annotations are um, at the rate before suit, mm -hmm. um, then at the rate after suit, at the rate before test, after test, uh, before class, after class, and before method, after method. Right. And yeah, so its order will be uh, suit, then test, then class, then method. Yeah, correct. Okay. So, what is the importance of test ng XML file? Yes, so test ng XML file is actually the key that allows us to, to take control over our test suite. Um, I can I can run the test uh, I can run my test cases by using um, uh, test ng .xml file as per my requirement. So, for example, if I want to uh, exclude any method or any class, I can I can use exclude a keyword in my test ng.xml file and I can, I can exclude that method or class. I mean, as per my requirement, I can do that. Also, test ng.xml file is used for the parameterization mm -hmm. as well. And for executing the test cases parallelly, we can use test ng.xml file. We can configure the, our, uh, the that we have that we can run the test cases in parallel and by using a parallel uh, keyword we can run our test cases in a parallel manner mm -hmm. wonderful yes. answer yeah so i think you covered almost all the points one was it allows to pass the parameters then it allows to yes. put the priorities then con uh, you know you can configure parallel execution of test cases using xml file then uh, it allows you to parameterize the test cases and it allows you to add the group dependencies. So these are yes. the, I think you covered almost all of them. Okay, so what is test ng assert? Uh, the selenium asserts? Uh, yeah, uh, the assert or, you know, uh, you might be writing some code in selenium with Java thing. Yes. and uh, you will be verifying something so mm -hmm. yeah so yes yes uh, can you tell uh, more about that yeah yes, yes so assertions are actually used to put the validations mm -hmm. in our code mm -hmm. so uh, let's let's uh, I, i'll explain you with an example so sure. i know that on the fifth on the fifth um, statement i know that this is gonna fail the boolean that i'm uh, receiving is gonna fail but i don't want to display it in my console or i don't want to explicitly fail my test case so i what i can do i can put one method asset dot asset false and i can put one boolean um uh, statement that will return me boolean value asset dot asset false and the um, result of whatever i'm putting inside it it should be false then my test case won't won't fail and it will continue the execution. And same allows with asset dot asset true. In that, I'll I'll have to use uh, the true boolean statement. Mm -hmm. You know, so for example, if there is uh, one web element that should display, and if I'm uh, and if uh, that statement that uh, element is not displaying to us, so what I'll do, I'll put asset dot asset false and um, uh, element is not. I mean, for example, elements is this. Like, I mean, just take that example mm -hmm. and I'll put one driver dot find element and I'll locate that web element. So it is returning me the value as false that it is not displaying. So my test case will not be filled in that case. Mm -hmm. And same goes with the assert dot assert true. Also, there are different uh, other methods as well assert dot no null, assert dot null, assert dot equals, assert dot um, not equals. Mm -hmm. So these are the six uh, methods that are associated with the assert. Correct. And one more method is assert dot uh, assert all. So whichever the assertions okay. that you have used in the code, all in the test case in that particular test case, all would be verified, right? So yeah. that is that. Okay. Now, uh, mm -hmm. so consider a scenario where you had written ten test cases in your Selenium suite. Now mm -hmm. there is a requirement from the there is a change in the requirement from the project manager so 
uh, instead of um, you know two features into your product they are disabling one of the feature now the developer is also disabling that feature from the product now what will you how will you manage your test suite will you discard your entire test suite or how will you manage these 10 test cases let's say two test cases were of the disabled feature so how will you manage your test suite then okay so in that case in testng.xml file for mm -hmm. those test cases we can use an attribute which is enable mm -hmm. so if i'm putting enable equals to false then it will not include those test cases uh, in the execution mm -hmm. so instead of you know removing the test case we can just use one helper attribute it's, it was a perfect answer okay now consider uh, your test manager comes to you on one fine day and they and you have developed one e-commerce website into your organization okay now they want to know how uh, which are all the links that are working or which are the uh, broken links on that or broken images in that particular e-commerce website so is it possible to uh, you know find out by automation uh, yes it is possible mm -hmm. uh, but i mean i don't know the code but i know the logic yeah, yeah. Um, in you that case actually it it provides us the methods or classes to check if the status mm -hmm. of that um, links are uh, 404 so if it is 404 or uh, or um, greater than 400 it means mm -hmm. that the link is not working and uh, it, i mean in that uh, way we can find out that these are the broken links mm -hmm. right so uh, first of all you know there are five response codes that a mm -hmm. particular link can have one is 200 okay 200 okay means if the link is giving you the response code is 200 that means it is a valid link if it is 404 that you were mentioning so that is link not found then one more code is 400 that is bad request 401 stands for unauthorized let's say if uh, there are two users and uh, one user is authenticated to use that particular link but for other user it should uh, it should not allow to access that particular link so for that user you will get 401 unauthorized okay then one is 500 internal server error itself okay so what you can do using selenium you can find the links of the web page on that e-commerce website using a tag okay mm -hmm. then you can send the http request to all the links and you can read the http response codes now you can loop it you can iterate it through all the links that are present on the web page if you are getting any of these uh, 200 okay as a code that means it's a perfect link apart from 200 okay if you are getting any other response code that means those links are broken so so generally in these e-commerce websites like amazon.com is there flipkart is there they are using this automation and what they'll do immediately after the new build has been deployed by the developers they will quickly run their automation suite using this response codes and they'll check whether all the links are clickable whether whether they have not deployed any any broken links into their web pages okay okay yeah. okay. okay now consider there is a uh, application which you have to automate using selenium and it has got an image so how will you automate it um, no, I don't know this. Okay, no problem. So there is a, uh, you know, uh, Sikuli is known for automating the images. And Sikuli is an open source library. So that is a jar file, which you can integrate with Selenium, your Eclipse or IntelliJ, whichever you are using, you can download all those jar files. And what Sikuli is doing is Sikuli is uh, capturing the image of that particular object and then it would make a mm -hmm. click on it like that so many a times you know when we are doing end-to-end -end automation like uh, let's say the product needs to be installed via automation and then the automation suite has to be run now if some person would have used install shield wizard or you know some kind of a desktop application is there now selenium cannot uh, you know uh, click on the windows based or desktop based applications so over there, mm -hmm. either people are using auto IT or they'll go for Sikuli. If it's a completely image-based 
uh, click or capture it, then they'll go for SQL. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now, there are drawbacks also, like, you know, there are two sides of coin. So, SQL has got its own advantages, like image based. Mm -hmm. But what if the window resolution keeps on changing? Okay. So over there, there are some time chances that SQL might fail. So you have to capture the image image of that object very carefully, very consciously, so that it can be used in uh, subsequent uh, automations on any operating system. Because even let's say in the Jenkins, every time if you are deploying Windows Server 2016 as one of the OS to run the automation. Mm -hmm. So then if it's a single OS, so you will capture the image for one, one time, and you'll make the automation run. But if what if the operating system are getting changed every day, right? Sometimes 2012 or sometimes Windows 10 or sometimes Windows 8, Windows 7. So over there, sometimes, you know, that reliability is not being uh, achieved by a SQL. So you have to be very much conscious while uh, capturing those images, basically. Okay. Uh, so do we have any link or resource where, from where we can find it? Yeah, yeah. information about this if yeah definitely can, if you can share that with us. sure sure so i'll i'll share but on the google if you'll just write sikuli mm -hmm. s-i-k-u-l-i and you'll get all the libraries all the open source you know uh, people have written blogs also on it like how you how it can be implemented or integrated into your existing automation code so just mm -hmm. try okay. those things because these things are you know uh, very rare and People uh, might, may, it depends on the use case to use case. Some people have created entire automation suite using SQL itself. As their, uh, you know, their web applications or applications were not having that much, you know, ob object recognition things. And the developers have also uh, left the companies or they have been shifted to other projects. Now organization, the management team is telling you that you have to automate it by any how. Mm -hmm. so, then they'll be using SQL, Auto IT, or even PowerShell scripts are useful at this time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll share the link immediately after this interview. And if you yes. can just type on the Google also, so you'll get all the information. Okay. Now, uh, how will you handle the SSL security certificate error in the automation? Okay. So uh, there is this class desired capabilities mm -hmm. and by using desired capabilities, we will create one object. So for example, I mean, for Chrome, we will first, um, we will first do it for the global 